continuing. So whoever touches the bodies of dead bodies, whoever touches the dead bodies of the falling animals will be unclean until evening. All animals with hoops, unless their hoops are divided and they chew the cud, and all four-footed animals with paws. Whoever carries the dead bodies must wash his clothes or he will still be unclean until the evening. And by the way, we are reading from Leviticus chapter 11, verses 24 to 47. Moles, rats, mice, lizards must be considered unclean. Whoever touches them or their dead bodies will be unclean until evening. And if their dead bodies fall upon anything, it will be unclean. This applies to any article of wood, cloth, leather, or sacking, no matter what it's used for. It shall be dipped in water, but it will remain unclean until evening. And if their bodies fall into a clay pot, everything that is in it shall be unclean, and you must break the pot. Any food which could normally be eaten, but on which water from such pot has been poured will be unclean. And anything drinkable in such pot is unclean. Anything on which the dead bodies fall is unclean. A clay stove or oak or oven shall be broken, but a spring or chasm remains clean, although anything else that touches their dead bodies is unclean. If one of them falls on a seed that is going to be sown, that seed remains clean, because you know the seeds destroy. So the what river is clean because it's going to change the seed is clean because it's going to be destroyed anyway to give root to that new plant. So the ambassadors. If any animal that has been eaten dies, anyone who touches it will be unclean until evening. And if anyone eats any part of the animal, he must wash his clothes, but he will still be unclean until evening. Anyone who carries the dead body must wash his clothes, but he will still be unclean until evening. You must not eat any of the small animals that move on the ground, whether they crawl or walk on four legs or have many legs. Do not make yourselves unclean by eating any of these. I am the Lord your God. And you must keep yourselves holy because I am holy. I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt so that I could be your God. You must be holy because I am holy. This then is the law about animals, about how, yes, this is the law about animals and birds, about everything that lives in the water and everything that moves on the ground. You must be careful to distinguish between what is ritually clean and unclean between animals that may be eaten and those that may not. So just to summarize here, right? Now you do have some of the Adventists, like myself, like chicken. There's nothing wrong with eating beef because, as I said before, beef doesn't fall into the category. They chew their cud and their hooves are not divided. True, right. Um, but I don't usually mess with beef now because, you know, the whole mad cow disease thing kind of killed it for me. Yeah, I don't know. You don't have to be strictly vegetarian to be an Adventist. You can still eat meat. You can still eat chicken. There's nothing wrong with chicken. You can eat fish. Nothing wrong with fish. Fish is okay. But you can't eat anything that doesn't have, like, things or scales. So let's say dolphins. You really should be eating that. Sharks shouldn't be should be messing with that. Um I'm not seeing where it mentioned so like shellfish for example, any form of shellfish, because they don't have fins or scales, you shouldn't be eating that. So shrimp, because I love a good curry shrimp. A good curry shrimp, you know the one of them from the Indian restaurant. But what if I put that now? Yeah, you can't you really have to mess with that. Oysters, conk. Yeah, you really supposed to mess with that. So I hope that helps. And there, again, there's like insects that hop, like let's say lotus. You can you can have that. I don't know why you'd want to, but um you can have it. If you want, I wouldn't be eating that, but um, do you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man, do you? <laughs> but I hope that helps. So yeah, you really shouldn't be eating pork. Pork is just not good for you. Like, I don't know if anybody talks about this. Oh, it's actually Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. 
where it talks about um what Matt did, um what John the Baptist did not. I know it was somewhere over there that was so funny. Matthew chapter three, verse four reads. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist and his food was locust and wild honey. Now, us saying what you can or cannot eat, it's not us trying to be restrictive as a Seventh-day Adventist church, you know. It's actually for your own good, to be honest, because like things like pork, it's not really that good. It's really not good. I understand that pork is unlike pork byproducts are used in everyday life. For example, pork byproducts are used in toothpaste. It's used in deodorant. It's used in even gum, chewing gum, but it's broken up. So by the time it's actually used in that state, it, it's not the same. It's almost like, kind of like that whole river concept. We get that. But like you actually like cutting up the pig and like cooking that up and making you whatever it is that you're making with it that's where the problem is. So I, I hope that makes sense. I really hope that makes sense. But just in case um, nobody talks about this, you know, with pork, it comes with a lot of excess saturated fats that increase your risk of developing heart problems, obesity, and other life long-term illnesses. And again, undercooked pork has a high risk of carrying viral and bacterial infections that pass on from pigs to humans. So it's there. I mean, fine, it's a it's a source of protein, but the benefits are slim in comparison to the actual dangers. Like you can even get like hepatitis E. And it's a disease, hepatitis E that causes inflammation and swelling of the liver. Not a not necessarily a good thing to be eating, and you know, long term con consumption of pork can lead to liver problems like fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, and liver cancer, like alcohol abuse, which is why you know consuming alcohol is not necessarily a good thing. I don't think I need to talk to grown adults about the dangers of consuming alcohol and smoking cigarettes. I I would hope not. I hope at this point in time, in the year of twenty twenty three of our Lord, that you understand with the internet <laughs> and smartphones and the graphic warnings on cigarette canisters that you should not be smoking. I hope, I hope so. But yes, there are other dangers in eating pork as well, like multiple sclerosis that is also associated with it. Your, your cinerosis or something like that. Obviously, parasites already mentioned that. It can lead to digestion issues, high blood sugar levels, kidney disease, and type 2 diabetes. So high cholesterol as well can be something that's affected by you consuming a lot of pork. And guess what? Like some good jerk pork, like a, a Boston. And yeah, and coming up, like if you go to Tony, you stop by the Boston Jerk Center. Yeah, man. Like the, but understand, a nice go with a jerk pork, a nice, a nice quarter pound or half a pound with some hardware bread in some festivals or something. And I assume, I understand, I understand, but it really not worth it. It really not worth it. The juice ain't worth it. That's just, it ain't, it ain't worth it. But it, I'm not telling you what to eat or not. I'm just letting you know from an Adventist standpoint, we don't really do that. <laughs> and just like explain why, because not many people really explain why. Many persons just say, yeah, we don't eat this. And again, you know, at least you're learning way more than I did. I, I honestly didn't know much about Adventism <laughs> besides the fact that they don't worship on, uh, oh, sorry, they don't work from sundown to Friday to sundown on Sunday. And all my church clothes are funeral clothes because after a while, I only went to church if there was a funeral. So you know way more than I do. So you're welcome, <laughs> right? Another thing that you probably didn't know about Adventist churches that I'm going to touch on now is that we abstain from fornication and adultery by God's power. It died to the flesh daily. And guess what? We don't even have to talk about STDs. We don't have to talk about unwanted pregnancies. We don't have to talk about it potentially ruining relationships if you're messing around with somebody that is not your spouse. We don't have to talk about the damage that it does to relationships with having premarital sex and you know not being able to handle certain issues when you get married or it causing issues down the line because you know guess what you were fornicating 
and you were taking advantage of a pleasure that was really meant for your marriage. I get that. And we don't even have to go there. And guess what? I'm no saint because this is before I was baptized. I was out here in these streets. I, I was fornicating. I was with a guy. I said, I'm not going to hide it. One of them wasn't even consensual. I'm not going to hide that. I'm, I'm going to be very frank with it. But at the same time, I understand now how problematic my behavior was. Because just like how you have sexually transmitted behaviors, you have sexually transmitted spirits. And everyone that you sleep with, you're taking a piece of their spirit with you. You're like a sponge when you're fornicating. And that's what something some people don't realize, especially as a woman. A woman's body is designed to keep. Like you're receiving that content of who you're with. And yes, even if you're a guy and you're just inserting, I get that, or whatever it is you do, you don't have to get all that out of You still partake in consuming a part of that person's energy. Your whatever messed up stuff they would have dealt with from all of who they dealt with, you're now adding that to you. Soul ties are a real thing. Um, it's hard to get out of. It took me years to get out of a soul tie. Like that, when that when that hole, you know, it, it, it's hard to get out of that. And some people never really get out of it, which is why you have some people stuck in past relationships. That can be a soul tie. Not saying I can't love the person and not say that. But soul ties are you know, You want to be careful, especially as women, because if we, as I said before, our bodies are designed to receive. So we're going to fall prey to that. So Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, actually explains it here. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. I'm your God. I let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong and help you. I will protect you and save you. You know, with choosing to serve God, you are committing to dying to the flesh daily. Is it hard? Yes, absolutely. Anything worth having is going to be hard. It is going to be hard. I mean, you can't expect that it's going to be easy, especially if you did it before. But you're really serious about restoration that God restoring you you're serious about growing not just as a business owner but as a person you're committed to healing you're committed to your own growth and personal development you're committed to helping finding a healthy marriage finding whoever your kingdom spouse is having your beautiful family and working on yourself so you can actually have the emotional vocabulary to have a conversation with your partner with your clothes on and have serious conversations and have direct communication. And these were all areas I struggled with due to my own past trauma and just witnessing a garbage fire of a marriage, <laughs> a burning garbage fire of a marriage and being the kid in all of that and seeing that from a kid's standpoint, it, it's not worth it. No, and I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to condemn anybody because guess what? I wasn't Mother Teresa before I got baptized. I wasn't. And I will be the first to admit that. And I understand what having that with having that taken from you is like. Some ladies didn't even have a choice. I know what that looks like. And I would never judge anybody for that. Some kids, and I can speak from that standpoint as well. You getting molested as a child, it changes you. You don't approach sex the way a normal person does. And I had to work through that. So I'm not judging anybody. What I'm saying is that you're having a challenge in that era. See, God, you have to learn to die to the flesh. I had it, had it. Nobody said seeking God is easy. As a matter of fact, you're getting baptized, you put a target on your back more than anything else. Do you realize that he was after Jesus was baptized? He went into the wilderness and the devil tried to tempt him. And even the third time, the angels had to come down and comfort him until the devil took us back off after Jesus said, We'll get you guided. But yet, if he wasn't tested, as God 
allowed him to start being in a position where he can like help but um heal people and give sight to the blind and all of that good stuff. When he was there being tested by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and whoever, if him couldn't go through what he went through in the wilderness, he couldn't he probably couldn't handle handle what he went through there. God was preparing him. If you really want the blessings God has for you, you have to be prepared for that. And if you can't handle keeping it zipped up in your pants, so when you get your marriage, oh, you're going to sleep with everything, go wear one skirt and walk around on two legs and tell you something nice. Like, really? What would be the point of marrying you then? Why would somebody put a ring on that? You, you can't even be faithful. And this goes to men and women. I'm not saying men aren't hardwired for sex. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I understand. Genetically, men are designed to want to pursue multiple partners. But if you're going to be married to a person, God made marriage for a man and a wife. It's a union between three, a court, it's a union between three people. The man, the woman, and the Holy Spirit. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. You gonna fornicate with all sorts of people. You, you mess up your own thing. So now you're going to have, I mean, I can even remember that child where my dad, that's my mom. And you're going to have the lady disrespecting your wife, disrespecting your kid, saying all sorts of stuff. You're bringing the kid, the bastard child, into the house and expecting everybody to play nice. That's disgusting. And you're making your wife or your spouse look like a joke. And again, I'm no saint here because guess what? I cheated. I get that. The sins of the father falls on the child. So I get that too. And I'm, I understand where my the parent that did that was coming from now because I'm not a saint either. I would have lived through that and had my own experiences. But I can also say that I hurt people when I did that. It, I was on all different sides of the cheating game. I get it. I was not that person. <laughs> I was the kid. I was the person on receiving it. And I was the person who did it. Even if it's just in thought, you emotionally cheating on somebody, it's still that's bad. Still just as bad. And this is something that people don't think about. It's not just cheating in the flesh, it's cheating in your mind as well. Because it leads to a reaction in your flesh. All right? So you coveting your neighbor's spouse, you're committing adultery, you're consuming porn and masturbating. Yeah. And guess what? You know, when you're masturbating, you're consuming porn like that which is also a form of fornication, you know, you open yourself up to spirits, right? Have you heard of marine spirits? You should really check that out. You Google that. You open yourself up to all kinds of spirits. You don't want that. Trust me, like, those spirits don't come with anything for them. So if you're wondering why you're financially stagnant, what are you spending your extracurricular activities on? Maybe we should think about that. And it says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Surely you know that the wicked will not possess God's kingdom. Do not fool yourselves. People who are immoral or who worship idols or who are adulterers or homosexual perverts or who steal or are greedy or are drunkards or who slander others or who are thieves, none of these will possess God's kingdom. Not judging anybody, but I'm going to repeat here. Surely, you know that the wicked will not possess God's kingdom. Do not fool yourselves. People who are immoral or who worship idols or are adulterers or are homosexual perverts or who steal or are greedy or are drunkards or who slander others or are thieves, none of these will possess God's kingdom. All right, so I hope this helps. I am not judging anybody. Everybody has to come to Christ in their own way and God had to work on me. And I can see that God had, God can work on you as well. I have a lot of trauma. I know what rape looks like. I know what molestation looks like as a child. I have experienced various instances where, you know, I almost was raped. Um, and it you know, would have been a gang rape as well. Thankfully, God blocked that. Um, I've almost been attacked. Like somebody actually tried to kill me. <laughs> So um, I've seen a lot of stuff growing up that I can understand if somebody struggles. 
from certain stuff, like even homosexuality, that spirit of perversion, that spirit of transversion, like, you know, wanting to be a transsexual or whatever, that's a demon. And sadly, children who get exposed to people who violate them as children are prey to that. And people with my background would have seen even like emotional abuse, even neglect. Yes, my parents did their best financially and they provided for me resource wise and they did what they could. And they can't give what they didn't have. And they didn't try and get healing on their own and they were working with the best that they could. And I don't hate them. I forgive them. But I would have still seen things that a child shouldn't have seen. I've seen a toxic marriage. I've seen persons around me get abused. And I want a chance of having a healthy relationship. And I hope you do too. And if you want a change in your life, whether it's with your finances, whether it's finding healthy relationships, not just romantic, just in general, having a better relationship with God, having a better relationship with yourself, you know, there's nothing wrong with working on your spiritual being. There's nothing wrong with going to therapy. There's nothing wrong with personal growth and development. There's nothing wrong with repenting. There's nothing wrong with taking accountability. Lord knows I've had to take a lot of accountability for my own past actions. But what I'm saying is, though, everywhere has standards. Don't think that God's kingdom won't have standards. And when God comes back for his world, you know, he's coming back like a bridegroom for his bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. If you really want to enter God's kingdom, is it really worth sticking to stuff that the end of the day will not even make you happy? Because guess what? You're probably masturbating. You're probably smoking. You're probably drinking. You're probably gossiping. You're probably coveting your neighbor or your whoever's stuff. Is it making you happy? Is it? And if you can truly answer that question and say yes, do you? But if it's not, and you know deep down that you are not happy, you've not been happy, you can't recall a period of time in which you were happy, what can you lose by giving God a try? What do you have to lose? Because what people don't understand is things of this world don't lead to fulfillment. They don't. I don't care how many women you sleep with. I don't care how many men you sleep with. It's an empty feeling. I know what it's like to go through a sexual experience with somebody and feel nothing. Just feeling dead inside. I know what it's like to hurt people and you don't like it because you don't know nothing. As a matter of fact, I know what it's like to use sex as a means of feeling anything because I wasn't feeling anything probably 90% of the time. I've actually like gotten burns. I legit like felt nothing <laughs> for a while. It was like when the like it was it was like actually like scarring. I don't think you can actually see it on my forearms, but I felt nothing. And, and these are two different instances in which I got burned. I've gotten whole cuts and not felt anything. I was numb for a while because of all that trauma and toxicity. I It had a physiological response that it did not take into account until I started doing spinal energetics therapy that was ingrained in my body. Because the body never forgets that stuff, you know. Don't think, don't think your body isn't keeping score of what you're doing. Your body's keeping score. And I'm not saying that things will be perfect once you surrender your life to God. Trust me, all your vices are going to come back. But what I can say is if you're truly not happy with the way things are right now. What would it hurt you to give God a try? Like, really try this time. 
Like really go through it, really die to your flesh, really repent daily. And there's no set time in which it's okay. That's I'm not saying that you're going to do this for two weeks and then magically all your problems will disappear. No, you're not saying that. People will go through stuff for years. You ain't special. <laughs> what I'm saying is, at least you won't be alone. Because there will always be God there. And if you think you're alone after you go through the process of getting baptized, that's when you need to have a prayer life. That's when you need to be talking to God at least three times. Yes, I said daily. Because guess what? Just like how when you're on your date, when you're dating your spouse or whoever, you talk to them at least three times, probably hourly. I'm sure you can talk to God that way because that's how you build a relationship with God. And, you know... <laughs> Me out here trying to be super girlfriend, super employee, super best friend. I was doing more to stay in touch with people that didn't care about me than God, who was my best friend the entire time. He was, he was my only friend the entire time. All right. So I hope this helps. Anyway, I've been giving you a lot of talking. I'm going to shut up now. But I do want to add um, if you saw value in this content, you know, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Like, so I can know that you like the video and the algorithm can know that you like the video too, so that it can recommend it to other persons that may see value in it. Um, this video had gotten cut off, so you can check out the previous video for more info. And, you know, subscribe so you can get more content like this on a daily basis. And share the video with anyone else that you think may get value from it. I am trying to reach 800,000 people this year. And I would love your help in doing that. And, you know, I actually recently got introduced to the Homestead Place of Safety. They have some young ladies there from ages 8 to 18. And, you know, many of these are, ladies were rejected from their homes. Um, some don't have parents. Some have parents that don't want them in the homes due to problematic behavior. Some are boisterous, not going to lie to you. Some are pregnant. Babies, pregnant, can you imagine? And, you know, some of them are interested in building a relationship with God. But the thing is, even though they're being taken care of, like financially, and they, they have certain resources from society and everything, people do donate stuff. So, because of what they would have been exposed to, they don't have the mindset to truly stay in relationship with God. And if they don't have somebody there to actually guide them, they're not only going to backslide, but they run the risk of probably never coming back to a relationship with God, at least not to the point where they don't go through a lot of trauma first. And I don't want that to happen. And I need your help. I need your help to give these ladies a fighting chance because I'm going to be honest, nobody else probably will. And, you know, I am actually donating 30% of the proceeds from my online store sales to these young ladies um, to help them to get like in touch with like, personal development materials, maybe some skills training, etc. So that it can glorify God holistically <laughs> with all aspects of their lives. And, you know, so they don't have to go back to that mess that they are exposed to. I can't do nothing for the, for the parents, but I can help these ladies. And I also want to donate 10% of the proceeds for my digital marketing services sales to, these ladies, um, to this cause to help the ladies as well. I would love your help. So I sell products that you're likely to need in the next two weeks from my online store, like dental floss, toothbrush, fabric softener, laundry detergents, new replacement shakes, lotions, makeup, um, fertilizers, etc. I also have my digital marketing arm. I do that through my company, Think Premium JE. And I offer social media marketing, email marketing, blogging, other forms of sales copywriting. I have two online courses, offer digital marketing services. And I also offer um, business consultation services as well for help businesses to reach their sales and marketing goals. So reach out to me using the comments below for more information. I am looking forward to hearing from you. If this video helps you, 
in any way, you know, again, please let me know. I, I would really appreciate it because it took a lot <laughs> to make this video. You know, God really had to work on my heart to make this. It's not the norm for me. So like, I, I really would appreciate it if it helped in any way. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. And remember to never stop dreaming. Bye-bye.